takeaways that, that I've had from um, working on ideas and starting companies um, that, that I'd like to share. Uh, the concept behind Twitter is something that I've had since I was about 15 years old. I became fascinated with cities and how they work, and I would have just scores of maps with me at all times. I would bring them everywhere um, I go, uh, much to my, uh, my parents' chagrin. Um, it would be in church, it would be everywhere. I would always be studying a map. And I really wanted to play more with what a paper map would allow me. So what I did was I taught myself how to program so that I could put a map up on the screen. And I got that far, and then I put some dots on the screen, and then I taught myself how to move the dots around. And now I had this beautiful map with all these moving dots, and I thought it was the most amazing thing ever, but the dots had no meaning whatsoever. So I started looking for meaning, and I found these, I was in St. Louis, Missouri, and I found these open public databases of ambulances, fire trucks, police cars, taxis, and couriers in Manhattan. And all these databases were updated in real time and freely available on what was then the internet, which had no web aspect whatsoever. Um, and I plugged in the data from those databases into these dots. And now the dots moved around, but they had meaning. They had an association of location and also what these entities were doing. So if you think about an ambulance, it's always reporting where it is and what it's doing. I'm at Fifth and Broadway, and I'm taking a cardiac patient to St. John's Mercy. So I had this very rich sense of how the, how the metropolis was living and breathing, and I was just completely fascinated by it. And it wasn't until 2000 when I realized, I'd, so I got into dispatch and, and worked in Manhattan, moved to Manhattan when I was 17, and started working on dispatch software. And then realized that there was one missing part of all this, which was the citizens and my friends. So what would that look like? And I thought about this a lot. And I was, you know, there are many, many sleepless nights. I, I think everyone in this room has felt um, the verge of an idea and how it just gets you a little bit excited and crazy and you can't sleep and you're on a whiteboard or, or you're drawing like crazy. Um, but that is one of the most important things to start doing, is to start drawing your idea, to start getting, getting it out of your head and seeing it from a completely different perspective. And more importantly, sharing it with others. So this was drawn in 2000 and I started implementing it, but I only implemented it alone. I had the first BlackBerry and um, I built this very simple system that allowed me to send an email to a little program that I wrote in C, and it would broadcast out that email to a list that I determined, which were my friends. So I got this done in about two days. I went out to Golden Gate Park, and I went to the bison paddock, and yes, we have real live bison in San Francisco in the middle of the city. Uh, and I talked about like how I'm viewing the bison, and this went out to all my friends in real time. And it turns out that none of them wanted to hear it, um, and no one else had a BlackBerry, so this service was, was doomed for failure. Um, but the important thing was that I was able to get something out and really just keep it in my mind, put it away for now until another time, and did the same thing with a new service, which I'm starting called Square, which hopes to redesign the payment experience and bring it down to a more human level. So these were the original drawings for, for what Square is today. The second, the second big thing is, is luck. And it's not relying on luck or relying on fortune. It's being able to recognize when it's happening around you. And being able to recognize a situation that encourages um, build out and execution of an idea. And there are two things that happened to me in 2006 that allowed Twitter to be what it is today. The first was that SMS got very big in this country. After 10 years of Europe having it exclusively, in 2005 and 2006, I could finally send 
an SMS text message from Verizon to Singular. We had cross-carrier compatibility, and they were reasonable, reasonably enough priced to allow, to allow us to do that. And once I saw this technology, I was just so inspired. I fell in love with how rough around the edges it was, the constraint of 160 characters, the interruptive nature of it. And I was instantly reminded of this idea from 2000 and my dispatch days where you have all these people roaming about and constantly reporting where they are and what they're doing. Fortunately, I was also in an environment that allowed me to be very creative. I joined a company called Odeo, which was a podcasting company um, in 2005, the end of 2005 and early 2006. And one of the biggest problems with Odeo was no one in the company was a podcaster. So no one was doing podcasts. No one was using the tools that we were building. Um, but we had some very, very creative people working with us. And these are my co-founders, uh, Evan Williams and Biz Stone. And we, uh, we decided to explore some other ideas. So, so that was an amazing jump to go from a company that was working on audio and, and music and podcasting to allow exploration of, of other things. Um, and the second thing was that, you know, I brought up this idea, like, what if we use text messaging for this very simple publish, subscribe um, metaphor. The great thing about these two guys is they come from Blogger, and they know how text-based interface, interfaces work. They know how logs work, and they immediately got the um, concept of what, what Twitter was. Um, so I was given two weeks, one other programmer and, and Biz Stone, um, to work on Twitter, and we built the original implementation in those two weeks, and the first human-written tweet was um, inviting coworkers, and the company fell in love with it, and uh, two years later, we were awarded a monkey statue. So that worked out. That, that is part of recognizing a lucky situation. With Square, the lucky situation and the fortunate situation was the financial crisis. The interesting thing about the financial crisis is we, we have for years been building up these abstractions of money to the point where no single human in the world understands the global financial market. No one can keep that in their heads. And what we saw during this time was a crashing of all of those abstractions and everything that we built up to hide all this mess down to basic foundations, basic communication. And when you really think about it, payments and the exchange of money is inherently social. It's another form of communication. So why isn't it designed as such? Why isn't it treated as such? And that was the reason, one of the reasons we started Square is to take that on. But the situation allowed for us to very quickly seek out all the people that we needed to talk to at the banks, at the government, at the card brands. Everyone in the financial world was suddenly in a survival mode looking for innovation, looking for new things, looking for new business models and new ways to think about their very old, old businesses that have just massively failed and been destroyed internally. So new teams would come in, and, and they would be looking out for this sort of initiative and this sort of innovation. So that allowed us to move very, very quickly with Square. And we were able to get everything that we needed to get done in under seven months, which is amazing for anyone entering the financial world in a law-abiding way. The third is the importance of iteration. So this is what Twitter looked like originally. And um, I, think, I think it says, what's your status? Um, which is not a great question um, to ask someone. <laughs> I, I don't know how to answer that um, or what, what they're even asking me. But this, this, uh, this was one of our first pages. Um, and this is what the, what the system looked like. Um, we, had a, we had a timeline 
We had our entry box at the top, which is still with us today. Um, we've changed the question a lot, and we've changed the question based on user feedback and how people have adopted to the service. Um, so it's gone from what's your status to what are you doing to the more general what's happening, which allows for a lot of different answers, including what you're thinking and what's happening around you and um, you know, plants updating that they need water and dishwashers end of cycle. So anything can be answered in, in that question. The most interesting thing about Twitter and um, iteration is how the company became more or less a editor of the user base and an editor of the usage. So almost everything you see today in Twitter was invented by our users. The at symbol before a username was not invented by anyone in the company. That was a usage that we saw and made easier. We decided to implement it into the company. The RT that you see before tweets is a retweet. That was invented by users as well. It was a behavior that we saw a lot of. Um, we initially resisted it because we thought it was ugly just like the at symbol in front of people's names. But it became this beautiful way to rebroadcast content in a very, very powerful um, and efficient manner. The hashtag, not invented by anyone in the company. Also, we thought it was ugly. The word tweet, not invented by anyone in the company. And we resisted that for a long time. Um, but eventually, it just took hold, and it became the, the thing, the, the, the atomic unit of of our business. So getting into a position where you can draw something out, you can recognize the situation around you, and you can immediately share with people, I found to be very, very important. And being open enough to iterate very quickly, but being open enough to be an editor, and really taking the position of an editor, taking all these inputs, all this feedback, which is actually quite daunting and scary in many cases. And it's very easy to go you know, the flow of whatever the loudest voice is. But being a really good editor on your product, on your creation, on anything you do, I think is an amazing trait to have and has been the success of Twitter. And also the success of Square. This was our first um, initial uh, screen for, for what Square is today. And uh, I realize that Probably not a lot of you have seen it just yet, but hopefully you will in a, a few months. Um, but Square is a very easy way to allow anyone to accept a credit card payment. So we built this very simple device, which we're giving away for free. And it plugs into your headphone jack of your Blackberry, your Android, your iPod, or iPhone, or your desktop and laptop computer. And you can swipe credit cards with it. And what we found was that 90% of this country is paying with a plastic card of some sort, credit cards, gift cards, prepaid cards, debit cards. But only 2% of the country can accept payments of those, of those cards. So what if we turn on the other side? What, what happens? And more importantly, what does that interface look like? This is not something I would trust at all. So a lot of Square's iteration is around building a beautiful product experience that immediately inspires trust. And you know, uh, the, the ability to hand over your credit card, to hand over a payment device that you own that is you know, oftentimes seen as you know, the first step in identity theft um, to someone you don't know because of the product experience. And the last thing, which is the fourth, and surprise, is knowing when to stop. Um, I, think, uh, I think it's very easy to let an idea go on for too long. The most important thing about being able to draw out your ideas and share your ideas immediately is you get instant feedback on what works and what doesn't. And I found it very, very difficult to put an idea out there, and then realize that it wasn't, it wasn't working, um, and that I had to put it away and move on. And maybe some element of that idea would emerge in another thing that I'd, I, I'm working on 
later on. And that turns out often to be the case. And, and that's something to, to really keep in mind is, is how, do you, how do you quickly move from idea to a drawing to some sort of prototype to a position where you can say, this is something that I want to spend my life doing. This is something that I want to work on. This is something I want to share with other folks. Or it's something I want to put away so I can draw out the next idea. And, and that's something that I learned with, with both Twitter and Square. Um, bringing in you know, and, and having such an amazing management team at Twitter has allowed me to focus entirely on Square and what immediacy and transparency and approachability, those concepts I learned from Twitter and those ideas that I hold very closely to me mean for the financial world and for payments in general. And with that, I think it's time to finish this talk. Thank you.